The smaller hawks are the ones that are the biggest threat. And in, in particular, uh, the group of hawks uh, that are in the, uh, the occipiter group, and the two in particular, <clears throat> they look identical from a plumage standpoint, but one just happens to be a little bit larger than the other, and that is the sharp shin hawk and the Cooper's hawk. Well, for us, the area that we're in, uh, our region, we don't have any sharp shinned hawks, and any that we do see are just transient. They're in the process of migrating further north, which is which is wonderful. That's please just keep moving. The Cooper's hawks, though, we used to be just a little south of their the very southern part of their breeding range, but over the past ten years, that has totally changed, and now Cooper's hawks have exploded in numbers over the past. 10, 15, 20 years. And now we are fully in their breeding range. So we have Cooper's hawks here year round. And Cooper's hawks, their numbers are continuing to grow. And in recent years, I have seen just, just listening to some of the, the Martin forums online, hearing what a lot of people are reporting, more and more people are having their colonies repeatedly attacked by Cooper's hawks, and there are some people that are having their colonies just picked apart, attack after attack to the point of completely losing their colonies altogether. It is a upsetting, a sad, a maddening situation that is going on with the Cooper's hawks, and and, and it's not just Purple Martin landlords, I should add. You're hearing about folks that are possibly that have uh, homing pigeons that are having to deal with this massive influx of Cooper's hawks. People that are uh, just attracting songbirds to their backyard, enjoying attracting songbirds to like regular bird feeders, are seeing their backyards get just turned into this hunting ground for these hawks to the point where they're not even seeing any more songbirds in their backyards. And so that has been a much, much more difficult fight. Obviously, the hawks enjoy very strict protections, as do the Martins. But, you know, I have to be very careful when I say this. Obviously, a lot of these laws are put in place to protect a lot of the species and, and you know, to make sure that they're not killed or, or things that are done that can potentially cause their numbers to decline or even disappear. But the hawks, the, the Cooper's hawks in particular, have adapted to a lot of these situations where all of these these suburban backyards uh, that have produced these bird sanctuaries where all these songbirds have enjoyed for a long time of you know really not having to worry about predators coming through and taking on a routine basis the cooper's hawks have moved in and, and and taken advantage of that and you know i ask the question sometimes and i've asked this before on on some of these forums Obviously, the Cooper's Hawks numbers have exploded. It doesn't take an expert to see that. Their range is greatly expanded. Their numbers have exploded. So at what point does the various state DNRs, or in this case, it would be the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service because they are federally protected, or in Canada, it would be Nature Canada. At what point do they take a step back and say, okay, we have one protected species, in this case, the Purple Martins, whose numbers are declining that are being heavily predated on by these other protected species of raptors, these Cooper's hawks, whose, whose numbers are exploding. At what point do we reevaluate what's going on here? Do we start allowing maybe for relocation programs where a Martin colony is under siege? Can the DNRs send someone out to maybe trap and relocate? I mean, of course, there's all sorts of problems with that. If the hawk is actively nesting, obviously, you don't want to remove adult hawks from being able to take care of young hawks that are still re relying on them, everything else. But I don't know. You know, long story short, that, that has become a big, a huge problem, a huge problem.